Hey guys, welcome back to the studio. I think every guitarist should be able to play tunes unaccompanied with as much freedom as we strive for when playing with a trio or with larger groups. Today, I'm going to teach you guys an arrangement that I cooked up with a classic standard, Fly Me to the Moon, that works great as both an unaccompanied performance and for playing with a guitar trio. I'll start out by playing through the whole thing for you, and then take you through a couple of my favorite moments in a little bit more depth so you can get a window into my thought process for this kind of an arrangement. You guys ready? Let's get started. So obviously the harmony here is pretty dense and I'm making liberal use of the six diminished concept in order to voice the tune out in such a thick way. Let's go through a couple of key moments so you guys can grab some of these ideas for your own solo arrangements. First up, let's take a closer look at the second four bars of the tune. There's some funny chords in here that I think you'll want a closer look at, as well as some bass note work that I think really brings this section together. The section's melody starts off on the third of an F major 7. Now that's a pretty easy thing to grab, but I think the thing that's worth looking at here is how I chose to move that through the melody by just using the F6 diminished scale. Here, take a closer look. This chord that I chose to play first isn't inherently a part of the F6 diminished scale. It actually comes from borrowing this note, E, from the diminished above it like this. Then. Since the melody is completely scale-based, I can just walk my way down the scale as chords, keeping that note in the alto voice borrowed from above until I finally land at this B half diminished. That gives us some pretty interesting and juicy chords here. We got F major 7, E half diminished, D minor major 7, and C sharp diminished major 7. Lots of tension, but I think it sounds great. When we land at this B half diminished, I'm thinking D minor 6 diminished all the way up to landing at this G sharp. Playing the diminished here is a really tense choice, but it fits the melody and gives us a sound of an E7 flat 9. From there, I played this D half diminished as a substitute for E7 flat 13 flat 9, which comes from the F minor 6 diminished scale. Then I just resolved the melody note and finished up with this C6 diminished to cover the last two notes of the phrase like this. Something else to pay attention to here is how I chose to stagger the bass notes and the melody so it gave this section a better rhythmic pulse. Let's take a look at the next four bars so you guys can see how I chose to fill up some space with solo comping ideas to keep the arrangement moving. These four bars end a phrase with a really long note, and that's not always the most convenient thing for us to deal with as guitarists. Check out how I chose to handle that section by putting in some extra comping and bass movement to keep the arrangement moving forward. We start off pretty simply by using this F6 to hit the melody here on this D. Then I play the next bit of the melody like this. I chose not to harmonize both notes to keep it from feeling too clunky. I started off the next bit of the phrase with a bass note before playing the melody out like this. Those chords are D minor 6 and then an F6, resolving the melody note down to make another D minor 6 voicing to fit over the G7 harmony here. Then I played the next melody note alone and staggered the entrance of the chord like this. That let me introduce some movement, which I then continued like this by dropping down to an F7 and moving to E minor 7, resolving the 7th, 
and then finally using this voicing for A7 so I could get the bass note in here and move on to the last phrase of the first half of the tune. Let's go on and check out the last four bars of the arrangement so you can see how I chose to handle the ending. There's a lot of different choices we can make when it comes to ending tunes like this. I chose to keep things simple and just play straight on through to the resolution of the melody and then played a cool little cadenza to keep things from feeling too bland. Here, take a look. I started out the last phrase with this F6 with one borrowed note. Then I drop down and play the next little bit like this. Again, I chose to not harmonize the first melody note so it wouldn't feel too clunky. For the last bit of the cadence, I played this D minor 6 and then the bass note. Then this diminished to give it some tension before abandoning the A flat and reaching down to the bass note G. Then I resolved the phrase into this C6 before playing this little cadenza. That just runs down the C6 diminished scale to here. Then I play this F natural to get into this D7 altered chord. Move that top note up a step and then held that in common while changing to this A flat minor 6 voicing over G7 alt. Then I resolve the top note back down a step and jump up to an E minor 7 or G6, whichever you prefer, with the B on the top to give it some color. And then I tapped out the root of the C to mark the end. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I hope I've been able to give you guys some insight into my thought process behind arranging a chord melody solo like this. Being able to play standards unaccompanied is a super valuable skill, and it can really teach you a lot about voice leading as well as rhythm. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of today's lesson. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notifications too. If you want to check out this whole transcription, you can get that over at my Patreon page, along with the material from all the other videos here on the channel for as little as 10 bucks a month. A big thanks goes out to my wonderful patrons, PH, Josh, David Zuckerbron, Patrick Caron, David Nickel, Max Irwin, Everton Armstrong, Jay Jarek, and Jazz Luminaire patron Vibhav Babadi. Thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you to all of you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.